Hey there, and welcome back to another video. Last time we did a brief run through of all the main computer components. Now we're going to do a more detailed explanation of each component. And herefore, our first component is the CPU. Like I said in the previous video, the CPU is the brain of the computer, and is where all the main computation take place. The CPU can be broken down into these five parts. The input, ALU, control units, memory units, and the output. In this video, we're going to go through each part in much more detail than in the last video. So let's go. The input is pretty self-explanatory, and since I've covered it in nearly all my videos, I won't be having to explain it in this one. Next on the line is the ALU. The ALU stands for the Arithmetic Logic Unit, and this is where the logical and arithmetic operations take place. In reality, the ALU consists of two separate units, the Arithmetic and Logic Units. The Arithmetic Unit can do a variety of mathematical operations, including but not limited to adding, subtracting, and checking whether the number is zero. You might be wondering why I didn't mention multiplication and division. Well, since multiplication is just repeated adding, and division is just repeated subtraction, there is not much reason to hardwire it into the ALU, as these processes can be done through software. However, newer CPUs now integrate these mathematical operations right into their hardware, making them run faster. The logic unit does any logic operations, mostly comparison. The CPU runs data through the logic gates like AND, AND OR, and then gives an appropriate output. This is also where IF and ELSE statements get processed. The ALU is usually shown like this. Next on the diagram we have the memory units. This can either be ROM, RAM, cache, or the hard drive. Let's run through each one. The ROM stands for Read Only Memory, which means they can only be read and not overwritten. In the ROM, the OS and key information is usually stored, specifically the BIOS, which is the program that runs as soon as you turn on your computer. This is the program that actually starts up your OS. It also runs a load of checks to see whether the computer is safe to run. Next is the RAM. The RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and this is where information currently being used in a moment is stored. This is an important piece of hardware because this is where the CPU stores instructions and data. I won't get into the nitty gritty of the RAM in this video, but we'll do in a later one. Next on the list, we have the cache. This is where the most frequently used information where the CPU is stored. It is not a lot of memory, usually in kilobytes or a few megabytes. Its advantage to the RAM is its position on the CPU. It is right on top of it, meaning that information gets transferred almost instantaneously. And the final form of information is the hard drive. This is the long-term memory of the computer and can store lots of information, usually in gigabytes or terabytes. It is located further away from the CPU, meaning that it takes the longest for the information to travel compared to other forms of information. Now that the memory unit is done, let's get into the control units. Like I said in the previous video, this unit is like the conductor of an orchestra. It tells how the information should act and where it should go. The control unit can give out control signals which tell the CPU what to do with the information. If the right signal is on, it tells the CPU that this piece of information needs to be stored at a given address in the RAM. If the read signal is on, it tells the CPU that it needs to load information from a given address. Now that we have gone through all the main components of the CPU, we need to know what all this information travels through, and those are buses. Buses are wires through which information travels, and it gets its name from, you guessed it, buses. This is because buses travel in a straight line, and so does the information, hence the name. There are three main types of buses, data bus, address bus, and the control bus. The data bus carries data such as numbers or text throughout the CPU, on which the CPU can then perform computations. The address bus carries addresses of information in the RAM. This tells the CPU where information is located in the RAM, and where to jump to if needed to. And finally, we have the control bus. This is the bus that carries control signals that could read and write. For example, if the control bus is carrying the write signal, the CPU knows that it needs to store data into that address. Now that you know all about the functions of each piece of hardware in the CPU, we now need to know how the CPU actually utilizes these components in order to run a program. And it does this through the fetch execute cycle. This cycle consists of three stages, fetch, decode, and execute. Let's run through this and see how it works. First, the fetch phase. A CPU has a program counter, and it's usually set to zero to begin with. This binary number acts as an address of a register in the RAM. Since it's zero, this will go to the first register in the RAM. It will then wait for a control signal from the control bus. Let's for example say that the signal is read. Now since the contents of the register is an instruction, it is sent through the address bus to the current instruction register. Now the program counter can be incremented by one, and the fetch phase is done. 
The next phase is the decode phase. The instruction consists of two parts, the opcode and the operand. The opcode is the type of computation that must be done, and the operand is the address of the register onto which the computation should be done. We can use the table to see what each opcode means. As we can see, the opcode 0101 means load, and the operand has the address of 0101, which translates to load address 0101. And finally, the execute phase. Now the CPU goes to the given address in the RAM and loads the number into the accumulator. And once again, the program counter is incremented by 1, and now it's ready to perform the next instruction. Load is not the only operation that a computer can do, it can also do operations like add and store. In reality, this process is done millions of times per second. The speed of the cycle depends on the clock speed of the CPU. The clock speed is determined by the clock, which is the physical parts in the CPU. It is set to a chosen amount of cycles per second. The CPU speed is measured in Hertz, and most modern CPUs are in the Gigahertz. The reason that the CPU even has a limitation to the amount of clock cycles in the first place is because if it goes too fast, the CPU overheats and breaks. Now that was the in-depth run-through of how the CPU functions. I haven't covered exactly all there is to know about the CPU, but I have covered the main gist of it. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the RAM, since it's convenient right after the video about the CPU. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Remember to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notification of the next video. So with all that, peace out.